Imagine being drafted into the NBA, having a reasonably decent career spanning an impressive 13 years, playing for five different franchises, and then getting killed by your ex-wife for insurance money when you're 35 and excuse me, wait, what? Hold on a second. Let's rewind that a little bit. Yeah, you heard it right. This is the shocking, tragic, and quite a diabolical story of murder, where former NBA player Lorenzen Wright was brutally killed by his ex-wife and another co-conspirator for an extremely cruel, selfish, and inhumane reason, which will certainly leave you shocked. So, without further ado, let's take you into this twisted journey of how a person's greed turned ugly and drove a partner to kill her ex-husband in cold blood. Lorenzen Wright was born and raised in Mississippi before eventually moving to Memphis, where he played various levels of high school and college basketball and made a name for himself as a local star, and eventually landed into the NBA after playing for the University of Memphis, when he was picked at an impressive number 7 in the 1996 NBA draft by the LA Clippers. After playing for the Clippers for three seasons, Wright played two seasons for the Hawks, then had five seasons in Memphis where he was a favorite with the locals, then two seasons again in Atlanta, followed by a season-long stint each in Sacramento and then finally Cleveland, before he called time on his NBA career. Sadly enough, his on-court skills and career didn't generate enough eyes on him compared to his life after the NBA, as awaiting him was a truly dark turn in his life. The story about his murder starts with the story of his disappearance, all the way back in 2010, when Lorenzen Wright allegedly left his place on July 18, 2010. He wasn't seen again or heard from again, until there was a 911 call placed from his number where his desperate plea for help couldn't even reach the other side, and all that the receiver heard on the call was a jaw-dropping 11 gunshots. Here's the audio of the 911 call placed by Wright. Since the person receiving the call didn't report it for as long as eight days, the investigation already started on a hindered note and it wasn't until July 22nd when Wright's mother, Deborah Marion, filed a missing person report about her son. And that's when things took a shocking turn, as per an article by A&E reporting on the case. On July 28, 2010, several days after his mother Deborah Marion reported him missing, Lorenzen Wright's skeletal remains were found in a wooded area near a golf course in Memphis, Tennessee. He'd been dead for nine days when police cadaver dogs found Wright's badly decomposed body. A person of interest in the homicide was Jimmy Martin, an unindicted co-conspirator in Lorenzen's murder and also Lorenzen's then ex-wife Shara Wright's cousin, who struck a deal for immunity and eventually led to a shocking revelation to point the police towards Shara Wright herself and her co-conspirator in the murder, a man named Billy Ray Turner. As per LocalMemphis.com who wrote about the case timeline, Memphis Police Sergeant Dennis Evans outlined phone records and deleted messages between Turner and Shara Wright in the weeks before and after Lorenzen Wright's death. It showed Turner making calls near Shara Wright's home hours before the shooting. Then, investigators said Turner's calls moved to a spot near the crime. At 12.12, Mr. Martin's phone is calling Mr. Turner's phone at the same time that Mr. Lorenzen is calling 911, Sergeant Evans told the courtroom. According to police, Martin and Turner cleaned up the crime scene and threw the murder weapon into a lake in Walnut, Mississippi. Multiple things indicated foul play in Lorenzen's murder. Links to potential drug dealers, him allegedly leaving to complete a drug deal before going missing, him carrying a reportedly large sum of cash with him. But none of it made it completely clear as to why the crime was committed in the first place. That was until in 2013, it was reported that Lorenzen Wright's ex-wife Shara, who the deceased player had shared six kids with, was sued by his father for blowing through the $1 million policy that Lorenzen had taken out for himself, which included the following listed expenses as per various sources. $32,000 for a Cadillac Escalade, $26,000 for a Lexus, $69,000 for furniture, $11,750 for a New York trip, $339,000 for purchase and improvement to a new home, $7,100 for a pool deposit, $5,000 for lawn equipment, and finally, $34,000 on legal fees. Jesus Christ. And while the case had gone relatively cold, Shara Wright also found some time to pen down a book called Mr. Tell Me Anything, 
which had a mix of fictional accounts inspired by real-life incidents between her and her husband's life, and also included some details about alleged abuse, domestic violence, and infidelity. While the contents of the book are surely up for dispute, the murder mystery finally started taking shape towards its conclusion all the way in 2017. The murder weapon was discovered all the way in Walnut, Mississippi. This discovery took place again with the help of Jimmy Martin, who had become an important key to solve the case. Investigations also went through to Kelvin Cowens, Shira Wright's ex-boyfriend before Lorenzen, and a possible motive was reported to be an alleged relationship between Billy Ray Turner and Shara, and the consequence of the murder leading to a heavy insurance payout. About a month later after discovering the weapon, Shara Wright, who had remarried after Lorenzen to Reginald Robinson, a Shelby County Sheriff's deputy, was arrested, and it later came to light that she attended the same church as Billy Ray Turner. As per A&E citing a piece from the Memphis Commercial Appeal, Martin told investigators he was with Turner when they disposed of the gun in the lake and was present during a meeting in which he, Shara, and Turner planned Wright's murder in Memphis, according to the Memphis Commercial Appeal. Martin also said he was involved in a previous attempt to kill the former NBA star in Atlanta that Shara also planned. It was finally in 2019 where, as per The Guardian, Shara Wright pleaded guilty to facilitation to commit first-degree murder in Lorenzen's death on July 25th of the same year. She also pleaded guilty to facilitation to commit attempted first-degree murder and sentenced to a total of 38 years in jail. The same article also discusses Martin's testimony, where he had reportedly said how Wright had lured her ex-husband by making up a fake excuse to meet someone for money, following which he was ambushed by her and Turner and brutally killed with the weapon then disposed and later found. The case continued getting delayed from 2019 to 2020 and eventually in 2022, when Billy Ray Turner was finally taken to court for trial, where plenty of statements and evidence were discussed that tied him to the crime, and after a lengthy period of deliberation and 12 years of mystery, Turner was finally sentenced to life in prison, and Lorenzen's wife had been sentenced to 30 years in prison and also denied parole in 2022. Reports indicated how all this was done for money, and how Shara Wright wanted a comfortable lifestyle for herself and her six kids that she'd shared with Lorenzen. With justice finally seeing the light of day, it was obviously an overwhelming sea of emotions that had engulfed NBA fans, citizens of Memphis, and more importantly, Deborah Marion, the mother of Lorenzen Wright. Here's a clip of Deborah talking to Shara after Shara pleaded guilty. Uh, Cheryl, I want to thank you for giving me my grandchildren. That's what I want to thank you for. But I want you to unlock them so I can visit them so they can see their grandma. And the twins going to be playing basketball near us now, so we want to see them too. We want them to be talking. Let them know we didn't do anything to them. We didn't lie to them or anything. We just love them. We just want to see them. That's all. Tragic indeed. With the past finally behind everyone and the criminals serving their time, we certainly hope it provides some respite to the family and Lorenzen's soul rests in peace. On that note, we come to the end of this video. Do like it if you found our coverage insightful, subscribe to the channel to join our growing community, and let us know in the comments what kind of topics you'd like us to cover next, and we will see you in the next one.